Tokyo Live on the Skate of the One. So hello everyone, uh, welcome to uh, Tokyo Live uh, Endoscopy 1. Uh, I'm Haru Inoue uh, from Shoa University, Koto Teresa Hospital. Uh, this session uh, uh, title is uh, Current Status of ESD in Europe and Asia. Uh, it's my great honor to introduce the uh, co-moderator of this uh, session. Uh, it's uh, uh, Mario Denis uh, Libelo. So uh, he's uh, no need to uh, introduce him, but the, uh, anyway, so he has a uh, renowned endoscopist, uh, not only Europe and worldwide, and the, uh, um, he is a current president of the uh, ESGE. So uh, it's a, a great uh, honor for us to uh, work with him. So. Um, and the, today we have two our uh, great speakers. So uh, Mario will introduce them. So Mario, please. Thank you for your kind introduction. And once again, congratulations for, for this initiative and also for everything that you have been doing for endoscopy worldwide. So it's a pleasure and an honor to co-share this uh, session with you. So for our, for our participants, um, we will have a session on the current status of ESD in Europe and Asia. We will have two speakers. Uh, first, uh, Seishiro Habe, uh, we, will, we will approach the technical tips and tricks of esophageal ESD using the IT knife nano. And then we will have uh, Sergei Kashim um, that we will speak about how uh, he uh, dealt with introduction of VST in Russia. Um, Say so so Shiru Habe, it's also um, well known uh, worldwide. He is um, he's, uh, a, a, an author of several manuscripts in this field, pushing this technique. He's also associate editor of Digestive Endoscopy Open and um, one of the co editors of Endoscopy International Open, among many other uh, awards and prizes. So it's a pleasure to have you here, uh, Seishiro Habe, and um, um, please, please go ahead. Okay. Um, thank you so much for your kind introduction, uh, Professor Mario Dines Ribeiro. And also, I, I greatly, I deeply appreciate Professor Inoue. Thank you so much for having me. It's my great pleasure. Uh, let's get my presentation started. My talk today is technical tips and tricks of esophageal ESD uh, using ITNF Nano. An ESD is an advanced endoscopic resection technique allowing for high envelope resection and outside resection rate uh, regardless of lesion size and location and following precise histological assessment uh, such as depth of invasion and lymphovascular invasion. However, an esophageal ESD is technically more demanding and time-consuming procedure than EMR, uh, owing to a thin wall and narrow lumen of the esophagus. It is very important to select an appropriate ESD knife and item for successful esophageal ESD. Uh, we normally use both an IT knife and needle type device, such as dual knife. A uh, therapeutic endoscope with water jet function is essential to inject the saline uh, to the submucosal space and identify the bleeding source uh, in case of intraopathy bleeding. A uh, distal endoscopic cap is a must-have item to get stable scope position and smoothly enter the submucosal space. And highly viscous injection solution uh, such as uh, sodium heronate and uh, carboxymethyl cellulose and carbon dioxide insufflation are commonly used uh, to maintain the good submucosal cushion and prevent perforation and following emphysema. Our next topic is technical tips and tricks to perform safe and efficient esophageal ESD. The first point is optimal insufflation. I would say that Optimal inflation level of the esophageal ESD is much lower than screening and diagnostic and EGD. 
a less air condition will make submucosal space thicker and softer, uh, which allows us to facilitate esophageal ESD. Uh, let me show you the video. Uh, here you see an esophageal SCC and after marking. In this case, and we actually use an oralized pro knife. Uh, during mucosal incision, a less air condition helps us get the stable uh, scope position with endoscopic cap. And also, uh, in the uh, standard air condition, um, it is very challenging to enter the submucosal space uh, because of a thin and extended submucosal space like this. And when uh, we suction air and minimum um, air inflation allows for entering submucosa uh, like this, uh, this low air condition greatly contributes uh, to efficient submucosa dissection and preventing perforation. In terms of ESD device, an IT knife is specially designed for esophageal and colorectal ESD. An IT knife nano has a smaller insulative ceramic tip and a shorter blade compared with an IT knife too, uh, which is mainly used for gastric ESD. As you can see, an IT knife nano facilitates an entering submucosal space and a backside electrode is small uh, disc shaped, uh, which minimizes the spark to muscle layer, allowing us to reduce the risk of perforation. Uh, when it comes to mucosal incision using IT knife nano, and it is very important not to press the mucosa too much. If you press too much, uh, as you can see, uh, you may experience um, population of the muscle injury uh, during mucosal incision. And as you can see, uh, we can safely and efficiently perform longitudinal mucosal incision uh, just pulling back the device, uh, not to press too much. Next are uh, tips and tricks. Uh, during esophageal ESD, uh, we need to consider the gravity direction uh, when we perform esophageal ESD. Obviously, the left side is a gravity dependent side when we perform the left lateral position. As we continue the submucosal dissection, the region is gradually shifted distally and towards the left side uh, due to gravity. Thus, the distal left side uh, is the most challenging part uh, during esophageal ESD. If you leave the area uh, following procedure, uh, particularly the end of the ESD, will be very much challenging to obtain the sufficient traction and identify the edge of submucosa. Uh, in order to overcome uh, the technical difficulty, uh, we performed C-shaped um, mucosal incision to maintain the tissue traction uh, towards the anti-gravity dependent side. Also, when we perform submucosal dissection of the left side, uh, we can safely dissect the submucosa uh, manipulating the IT neck nano uh, from inside to outside. I can show you the video. Uh, because the submucosa of the esophagus is soft and loose, uh, we apply the ceramic tip to the submucosa and dissect the tissue uh, from inside to outside. Uh, this procedure allows us to identify the edge of the submucosa and the muscle direction. And we can also dissect the submucosa distally uh, while we advance the IT9 nano and the gastroscope. We complete the submucosal dissection of the left distal side uh, until the distal end, the most challenging part of the esophageal ESD. In contrast, the right side um, is an easier part because the right side is naturally open and exposed uh, due to gravity. After submucosal dissection of the left distal side, the clip line traction is commonly used uh, during esophageal ESD. 
A line, a typically dental floss is tied to an end clip outside the patient, and the clip is line is deployed to the backside of the specimen. When the line was pulled through the mouth, the submucosa layer was well uh, exposed and lifted up with sufficient traction. We hook the IT neck nano uh, to the edge of the submucosa, and the submucosa dissection was nicely performed uh, parallel to the muscle layer. Allow me to introduce a randomized control trial uh, named CONNECT E trial. A patient with esophageal SCC or randomly assigned uh, into either an ESD without a clip prime interaction or ESD with clip prime interaction. The primary endpoint was ESD procedure time. The ESD procedure time was significantly shorter uh, in the traction assisted ESD group uh, compared with conventional ESD group. Notably, the perforation rate uh, in the traction assisted ESD group was 0%. What I want to say is the clip line traction is beneficial to reduce the risk of interoperative perforation uh, thanks to better exposure of the submucosa dissection plane. The current Japanese and ESD guideline I recommend to use a, a clip prime traction. Now, I think the clip prime traction is a game changer of the esophageal ESD. Uh, as far as I know, to best of my knowledge, uh, this is the first guideline uh, which mentioned the ESD technique. Uh, let me show you one case. Uh, high definition white retained endoscopy shows the two elevated lesion of the body esophagus, uh, C2M5. A post EMR scar covered with squamous epithelium. And actually, uh, uh, these two lesions were local recurrence after incomplete uh, endoscopic mucosa resection. And NDVI magnifying endoscopy showed the tumor demarcation line like this. Uh, however, it is very much challenging to precisely diagnose the lateral extension of the esophageal uh, neoplasm in the direct esophagus, uh, even by the expert hand sometimes. Uh, that's uh, just in case uh, we perform the negative biopsy uh, from outside the lesion. Uh, not random, not random biopsy, but targeted negative biopsy uh, to make sure the lateral extension. Uh, we performed the wide marking along the lesion and performed extensive ESD. Uh, here you can see an endoscopic marking and outside the two lesions. And the mucosal incision uh, was performed uh, using the dual knife J in the retrofraction. And the following procedure is a submucosal dissection uh, using the IT neck nano. A submucosal dissection was performed in parallel to muscle layer. And after the circumferential mucosal incision and the trimming the edge of the submucosal dissection plane, as a lesion sifted distally. Uh, thus, we use the clip line traction technique. A line was tied to the end clip and outside the patient. Um, then, a uh, clip with line was introduced and deployed to the back side of the uh, specimen. Uh, when the line was pulled through the mouth, approximately Yes, a submucosa layer was well exposed and lifted up uh, with satisfactory traction. Uh, this procedure allows us to perform an easy and fast submucosal dissection. Uh, we continue this procedure. Uh, here you can see uh, the submucosal fibrosis and owing to a prior EMR. Uh, but uh, we are able to dissect uh, the submucosa fibrosis uh, using IT neck nano device. Uh, we manipulate the uh, uh, IT neck nano uh, parallel to uh, muscle direction. The finally, it's an unblock resection was achieved. As you can see, uh, the semi circumferential uh, mucosal 
uh, extensive mucosa defect involved uh, more than 90% of the luminal circumference. And after that, uh, for the prevention of post ESD stricture, uh, we performed the local tramsinol injection. And as you can see, uh, tramsinol acetonide was injected on the mucosa defect and uh, multiple bleps were created um, after an injection. Uh, here you can see the local recurrence uh, was successfully removed endoscopically. And the uh, uh, lower right image shows the severe uh, fibrosis uh, due to a prior EMR attempt uh, where I dissected uh, with uh, IT neck nano device. Uh, in addition to our uh, local transitional injection immediately after ESD, uh, to prevent the post e 3 stricture, a patient took oral prednisolone. Unfortunately, the patient has been asymptomatic and follow-up endoscopy eight weeks after ESD reveals no stricture at all. The standard gastroscope could pass through and no endoscopic balloon dilatation was required. Unfortunately, the mucosa defect can be a change to the normal uh, squamous cell epithelium. That's very nice for patients. An endoscopic submucosal tunneling dissection was uh, developed and uh, reported mainly from China. Uh, I'm going to show you the video. Uh, similar to POEM procedure, and after entering into the submucosal space, the submucosal tunnel is extended distally uh, with backside electrode of the insulated tip uh, while traction is maintained. And after completing the tunnel creation, uh, we dissect laterally both sides, expanding the tunnel uh, with good traction on inside the tunnel. So even for the circumferential lesion, uh, we can perform the umbrella resection. Uh, here you can see the shearing shape of the specimen and open the specimen reveals an unbroken R0 resection. Uh, in this case, as expected, a post es stricture occurred uh, despite oral preterizolone and local no injection. Uh, however, uh, the post es uh, stricture was successfully treated with multiple uh, EBDs. Uh, right, right now, the patient uh, can eat anything. Uh, in conclusion, uh, the IT Nike Nano allows for safe and efficient uh, esophageal ESD. And she shaped uh, incision followed by submucosal dissection uh, is a reasonable strategy uh, given the gravity direction. And traction assisted ESD and submucosal tunneling dissection are game changer of esophageal ESD. I think uh, once so you can master the tip and tricks of esophageal ESD uh, using IT Nano, Nano, uh, you will be able to get a steep learning curve. Thank you so much for your kind attention. Thank you. Thank you for your um, great, great lecture. And um, uh, I don't know if we have, well, some questions. Um, this is... Sergey, do you want to, to put any question or? Uh, IT Nano is a very, very good device for uh, ESD in, uh, in esophagus or, for example, in colon. But unfortunately, in some countries, for example, in Russia, it's, is, uh, th this device is still not commercially available. And we are waiting for this uh, device because this is the future perspectives of ESD, of course. Yeah, this is, this is important. I think uh, in some cases we, we try to follow, of course, your, your, your master, but um, it's not easy. Actually, I've been using IT Knife Nano and it's my, of course, my favorite in, in the ESO yeah. because it's quite useful. Um, one question from my side. Um, do you have any suggestions to, to our audience uh, because you referred to place the clip on the back side. Uh, the, does this, in your experience, jeopardize the evaluation from the pathologist? Or do you have any trick also where to place the clip so that it doesn't uh, avoid or preclude any interpretation? Uh, 
uh, in my opinion, I don't want to uh, injure the specimen. That's why the, I would like to uh, place a, a clip is right on the backside, and hopefully mm, if we can. But uh, somebody uh, prefer to use applying the uh, clip on just the edge of the proximal side. That depends. So uh, may, may I ask one question to your uh, Dr. Seichiro Abe? So thank you very much for your uh, uh, very nice uh, uh, presentation. And I have a question to you. Uh, you uh, emphasize the uh, importance of the uh, four quadrant biopsy to confirm the uh, negative negative for uh, cancer. Uh, but actually, uh, in the case of a uh, uh, direct esophagus uh, who suffered uh, long term. So in such a case, the uh, uh, some part is a high grade dysplasia and the background as well, the uh, low grade dysplasia scattered. So sometimes uh, very difficult to identify it uh, endoscopically. There's a reason why uh, you mentioned uh, to uh, take uh, uh, the biopsies biopsy is, is uh, essential to uh, delineate the uh, confirm the uh, uh, lateral extension of the tumor. Is that right? Yes, thank you so much. Exactly. Uh, so I totally agree with your comment. So normally, the gastric cancer, so we can uh, diagnose the lateral extension. But the aden for the adenocarcinoma of the esophagus, uh, the region is uh, commonly combined with inflammation uh, low grade dysplasia. In that case, uh, even for expert endoscopies, it is very much challenging to uh, diagnose the lateral extension endoscopically. Uh, even using uh, any eye magnification. Uh, moreover, the even pathologists uh, cannot diagnose uh, cancer boundary in some case. So it, that's why the, I need to uh, take random, uh, the quadrant biopsy to make sure the other extension of the lesion. But, but you mentioned that uh, sometimes even a pathologist, pathologist, it's a very difficult to uh, make a uh, uh, accurate diagnosis. So at the time, so pathologists uh, uh, quite often said that the uh, take a, take a, uh, so one biopsy uh, from the quite normal part. It's a, a reference of yes. the background tissue. So is that right? Yes, exactly. Um, sometimes uh, the lesion is covered by non-neoplastic epithelium. In that case, the pathologists are. Uh, must diagnose it is non cancer. It is, I think that that's not a limitation of the uh, pathology and endoscopy. Yeah, yeah. So, in such a case, and the uh, uh, sometimes a patho even a pathologist, it's a very difficult. So, only one specimen, two specimen, so biopsy specimen, just a biopsy specimen. Um, uh, this is a cancer or not. This is a sometimes very difficult. So, in such a case, I think uh, one of the solutions is an uh, endoscopic diagnosis. So uh, uh, not only NBI, so we can spray the acetic acid, and the acetic acid NBI emphasize the uh, uh, superficial uh, atypia and more and more. So, uh, is there any comment on that? Uh, in my experience, uh, I not so frequently use uh, acetic acid for maternocalcinoma uh, yeah. of the esophagus, but uh, I think so. Uh, acetic acid with NBI is helpful to diagnose lateral extension. The reason why so I said so, it's, uh, I talked with the um, um, Mini Kanto and uh, Johns Hopkins, uh, she uh, recommend like that, and uh, also um, a guy from the uh, uh, Kansas, uh, it's a Pratik Sharma, so he okay. also uh, I uh, mentioned that the, uh, they will uh, sometimes combine with the acetic acid and the NBI. Mm. Oh, thank you for your comment. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> actually, actually, yes. Yes, yes. Uh, yes. thank you, you so yourself, much. I've experienced a large number of cases, I, I'm just saying. You know. Yeah, but the uh, instance of adenocarcinoma or esophagus, is, esophagus is low in Japan, so we need to learn uh, from the Western side. Yes, and um, this is also aligned with um, there are there there are at least one or two manuscripts describing the the low reliability even among experts to delineate, and this could be an argument, in fact, in the Western world to move from EM, EMR to ESD. But well, as you know, this is a huge discussion also. 
Okay, so thank you. Thank you for answering for the again for congratulations for the lecture and answering the questions in such a uh, pragmatic way and, and such a, a nice way. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. So it's it's my pleasure to to announce now uh, Professor Sergei Kashim. So he's an associate professor and um, well known uh, as the head of the endoscopy in the Yaroslav um, Hospital and also um, uh, an enthusiastic of promoting and, and pushing the idea that we should do more about uh, the stomach in Europe and in the Western world. And so thank you for describing your experience in the introdu introduction of EST in Russia. Sergei. Uh, Mario, thank you very much for your kind introduction. It's a great honor and pleasure for me to have my short uh, presentation at Tokyo Live. Um, I tried to introduce uh, ESD uh, in Russia. Uh, GI cancers, uh, we, we, uh, we are talking about uh, GI cancers in Russia, ESD, and new technologies and further perspectives. Let me start from the uh, statistical data. Uh, GI cancer still remains a, a major public health problem in the world and also in Russia. Uh, Russia is the most affected countries in Europe with uh, very high incidence and mortality rates. Uh, we uh, still have uh, the increased number of colon cancers and esophageal cancers and a slightly decreased numbers of uh, gastric cancer. Gastric cancer now the sixth most common cancer and uh, the second most common cause of cancer deaths in Russia. Um, unfortunately, most of the uh, cancers uh, are detected too late for the successful treatment. Uh, for example, only 11% of gastric cancer are detected at an early stage. Uh, as for my uh, Yaroslav region, the situation is a little bit better. Around 20% of cases are detected at an early stage due to the special regional endoscopy training programs together with the Japanese first of all experts uh, and, and also due to the good endoscopic facilities in our regional uh, hospitals. So uh, GI cancers management has been principally focused on the management of advanced cancer. From the historical point of view, the first ESG procedure uh, in Russia was performed in 2006 in Yaroslavl and in Moscow our, our, uh, after our first course of training in Tokyo and official registration of the first ESD Olympus IT knife in our country. Now we are focusing on the new technologies, for example, first, uh, full thickness resection uh, with Sentinel lymph node navigation. This is the future of uh, implementation of uh, less invasive treatment of uh, LOJ cancers. Uh, now the procedure uh, performed more uh, than in uh, 20 centers all over Russia. And the number of procedures uh, is uh, the number of procedures are rising, and in um, uh, 2020 uh, we performed uh, more than uh, 2,700 procedures. So, 27 percent of all T1 stage cancers are treated endoscopically by ESD. We have some problems. Uh, uh, despite the clinical benefits for patients, ESG remains the, uh, the time consuming at, and is not adequately reimbursed uh, at the present time. There is no unique current procedure terminology code for ESD, but according to the Special Health Care Ministry programs, ESD covered by insurance companies in cases of confirmed early GI cancer, only in these cases. That's why ESD is, uh, in Russia is the procedure for uh, treat, uh, treatment of early GI cancers. So um, uh, 
endoscopic submucosal dis dissection is is an established endoscopic resection technique uh, and for early cancer. And many studies have demonstrated favorable and comparable outcomes of uh, ESD. Of course, proper uh, patient uh, and lesion selection for ESD are very, very essential. Current European and uh, Japanese guidelines establish the indication for ESD. Uh, unfortunately, in Russia, we have no uh, our own guidelines and most of the procedures um, performed according to the uh, current uh, European and uh, Japanese guidelines. As for the uh, devices, uh, we uh, mainly used uh, Olympus knife. We also have urban knives, uh, hybrid knives, and a Korean uh, fine medics knife for knives for ESD procedure. As for injection agents, we have one commercially available hyaluronic acid for ESD. As for electrosurgical units, all of our um, uh, endoscopic departments use uh, Erbe and Olympus uh, electrosurgical uh, stations for, uh, for ESD. Efficacy. Uh, stomach, the rate of end block resection range from 80 to 95 percent. And you have, uh, and as you can see, there are zero resection range from 88 to uh, 92 percent with very low local, local recurrence rate. Uh, as for colon and rectum and block resection rate ranged from 85 to 95 percent. Uh, unfortunately, we have lack of data from uh, all of our uh, centers because we have no uh, any national uh, register for uh, ESG procedures. As for safety, uh, bleeding, uh, you can see that in gastric ESD, 5 to 16 percent. As for colonic ESD, 3 to 8 percent. As for perforation, gastric ESD is 3.5%, colonic ESD 6.8%. Post-ESD esophageal restriction is generally defined as a narrowing uh, through which a standard uh, gastroscope can be advanced and strictures developed in up to 25 uh, patients after esophageal ESD. Training is the very, very important uh, um, uh, important part of the um, implementation of uh, ESG in uh, Russia in our current practice. Uh, as you can see on this slide, we start our trainings in 2011 together with the Japanese expert and Toro Ita was the first one who organized the first Russian uh, uh, training we speak stomach simulators in uh, Yaroslav Endoscopy uh, Training Center in February uh, 2011. Uh, we also very thankful to uh, our Japanese colleagues who every year organize the special trainings in the framework of huge uh, international congresses. As for Yaroslav, Takuji Gatoda organized such kind of training in 2014. And uh, uh, on this slide, you can see Dr. Abe, who performed ESD procedures as well as trained our doctors six years ago, also in Yaroslav. As for uh, colon training, of course, uh, Yutaka site uh, paid a lot of attention uh, for training of our young generation of uh, doctors. And uh, during the last three years, he now organized the special uh, training programs for uh, Russian doctors. And of course, we are very thankful to Professor Inova, who uh, organized the uh, first uh, training uh, or for, or for Russian doctors concerned uh, esophageal um, ESD uh, in uh, Yaroslav as well in, as in other countries, uh, cities of uh, Russia. 
very important point uh, is the correct histological assessment because it's imperative for the successful the assessment of the successful treatment. This is the big also the big problem for Russia. Just uh, a couple of uh, pathologists uh, had uh, courses of training uh, in uh, Japan. As for my hospital, our doctors had uh, courses of training in Germany and in, um, in, in Japan. As for the future perspectives, I think that uh, LEX-related procedures with Sentinel lymph node navigation will definitely play a, a very important role in the treatment of uh, gastric cancer, uh, which more than, for example, two centimeters in size with the sign of uh, deeper uh, invasion. Uh, of course, motivation and training of endoscopists, first of all, for detection and the treatment of precancerous lesions are imperative for the successful um, prevention uh, of uh, uh, GI cancers and for the uh, finding of disease at the early stage. We also need to improve uh, our endoscopic facilities. We also need to create uh, new uh, guidelines for detection, management, and treatment of early, first of all, gastric cancer and precancerous lesions. We, uh, need, uh, we should implement the new quality control standards, and uh, we, we should focus on further treatment technologies with special training programs. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you, uh, Sergey. Um, I would open uh, your lecture uh, to a brief discussion. I don't know if um, Professor Aru Hiro Inoue or Dr. Habe, you have any questions to to Sergey? Yes, so Sergey. Uh, uh, thank you very much for your uh, nice uh, talk. And the, uh, you cover the uh, uh, history of uh, each country's uh, uh, friendship and the uh, ins install of the endoscopic uh, reception and the, uh, after that, the install of the uh, ESD, as right, uh, uh, long, long uh, history we have. So, and then uh, you also mentioned about the uh, uh, importance of the Sentinel node navigation. So would you mind uh, uh, talking a little bit ab about the, your technique, uh, your method of uh, sentinel node navigation? Uh, I think that uh, th this is the uh, technology for the further treatment of early gastric cancer. And in my hospital, we started to perform this procedure in uh, 2017. And now we have um, maybe not so big, but uh, uh, a very good experience. And our hospital equipped with the latest uh, um, Olympus uh, Visera station with the uh, infrared uh, laparoscope. And we uh, use in the sun in green uh, in, uh, in cases of um, uh, early cancers which are not suitable for intraluminal treatment. For example, the size more than uh, 13 millimeters in size. Uh, in a difficult, um, uh, a difficult location for the intraluminal ESD. And with the sign of uh, uh, submucosal, uh, uh, deep submucosal invasion. Uh, so, um, uh, I presented our data uh, two years ago in Portsmouth uh, in Pradeep Bandari course. Uh, now, I think that we need more data, Haru. Yeah, thank you very much. So uh, the reason why I asked is the, uh, um, uh, now actually uh, we gradually, gradually, gra gradually extend uh, the application of a flexible endoscope with resection of the uh, early stage cancer in some case. <clears throat> so 
uh, we uh, performed the uh, laparo and the endoscopic combined surgery. So at the mm-hmm. time, so evaluation of a sentinel node is a, a very, very important. So uh, you took the uh, ICZ-based uh, sentinel node navigation. Uh, it's a, a potentially uh, easy one. So I, I think I uh, agree with you. So uh, we can add the uh, ICZ in a some case of inject, injection so solution. So uh, d- can we perform the ESD in a uh, some case of cancer? So I I mean that as a background of the uh, uh, indication is the uh, um, uh, patient the, uh, who has the uh, 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 refusal of surgery or also very poor condition uh, to complete the gas, gas, uh, conventional gas retin. So it's a uh, anyway. So um, uh, I mean a partial resection combined with the lymph node of uh, uh, sentinel lymph node dissection. So anyway, thank you very much for your uh, Thank you. Uh, I, I, I guess that we need more data, first of all, from, from Japanese experts. <laughs> thank you. Dr. Abe, you have any question to Sergei? Ah, okay. Um, thank you so much, as always, and thank you so much for your excellent talk. I have a question about the uh, uh, cancer detection. Uh, you presented the uh, early cancer detection rate is higher in Yaros level than other area. So how do you train the young trainee to increase the uh, early det- cancer detection rate endoscopically? Uh, thank you so much for this question. First of all, we have the special uh, training uh, program and the special agreement with uh, some Japanese uh, universities. First of all, with Kanazawa Medical University, where uh, Professor Toru Ito trained, uh, t- uh, trained uh, created the special training courses for our young doctors. And uh, 15 young doctors had the long-term courses of training in, uh, in Kanazawa focused on, first of all, on the detection of uh, early uh, GI cancers. Uh, that's why during last uh, 15 years, we are uh, trying to increase and increase and increase the number of uh, early cancers uh, detected endoscopically. Uh, the, second, uh, the second very important point is the uh, modern video uh, techniques. Uh, m- m- uh, and now in all of the big uh, regional hospitals, we have uh, modern video systems with uh, uh, narrowband imaging, for example, with other contrasting uh, virtual technologies for, and we improved the detection of precancerous conditions and early cancer. And of course, uh, every year we organize the special uh, trainings uh, with uh, Japanese experts focused first of all on training of the young generation of doctors on the detection of uh, early uh, lesions. And the main uh, maybe um, slogan of this, uh, uh, of this uh, training course is uh, find early cancer. Uh, that, that's why all of the young uh, doctors are highly motivated for, 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 for the finding of uh, early lesions. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, anyways, I greatly appreciate your high cancer detection rate. Thank you. Thank you, Sergey. And uh, um, I realize also that you mentioned, and it was quite surprising for me that the, the number of cases uh, are decreasing. Did I listen um, um, correctly, or do you refer to the number of deaths or the percentage of deaths? So it's the, it's the, the gastric cancer increasing in Russia because with an aging population, that would be what I was expecting. Um, or it's it's decreasing. Decreasing the number of uh, gastric yeah. cancers um, uh, d- decreasing eleven uh, percent during last uh, uh, ten years. Oh, yeah. uh, uh, Mario, uh, and of course, I I, I should mention uh, our first uh, maps course in Russia, which was held uh, eight uh, nine years ago in in Yaroslav. 
that is also the great motivation for our young specialists uh, in not only in detection but also in in management of the patients with uh, uh, with the precancerous uh, conditions uh, of the stomach. Uh, all of these uh, all of these activities are very essential for uh, for Russia as well as other Western countries. Okay. Um, any any question? Uh, any further question? Okay. Congre congratulations, uh, Sergey, for your uh, leadership in Russia. It's it's um, uh, we well know that uh, uh, even though medicine it's it's a special world, we need we need the leaders, and um, you are an example in Russia. And thank you for joining forces and making bridge because finally the patients uh, deserve that and uh, and will benefit from from that and um if i if i'm allowed uh, i will close this session again to if we speak about leaders speak about uh, how do we know it thank you thank you again for delivering this course and to pushing the the science in the field of endoscopy further thank you thank you all and i hope that you enjoy of course this course well thank you very much Thank you very much. Thank you so much.